I'm Meridian Township Fire Inspector Tavis Millero, and we just did a live Christmas tree fire demonstration. Okay, tell us about the putting this all together in the building of the... So what we have here, this is a, what we call a burn cell, um, and we were able to get this donated, actually borrowed from uh, Delhi Township. Um, they have these put together um, for demonstration purposes from time to time. Really, it's a very simple design. It's just um, four studded walls, or three studded walls, plus a ceiling and a floor. Um, and then by putting drywall throughout the interior of it, you're actually able to make it reusable. Walk us through what, how you did the demonstration today. So step number one, get the tree. <laughs> get the tree as early as possible. Um, and making sure that it's, it's been cut, hasn't been watered, hasn't been treated with any fire retardant. Um, you have to do that first. Um, making sure you've got the burn cell in place, getting it drywalled. We finished that yesterday afternoon. Um, and from there, it's just basically decorating a tree, making sure it's got lights, you got power to it, and then anything else you want to put in there. You want to put things on the wall. We've done them before where we've had uh, pictures on the wall. Uh, we've done uh, curtains, furnishings, tables, chairs. We put a couch in here um, today, and really you can put it, anything you want in there um, to, to facilitate simulating your living room or room that catches on fire. Okay, what, what were the next steps of lighting the fire and having people on standby? So obviously we have to have uh, crews standing by because we are using, you know, doing live fire demonstrations. So um, we have to be able to put the fire out. And then in case anything goes wrong, we have another backup crew to that, um, which is true on any even fire response. The primary crews go in to fight the fire, but we always have people on other hose lines as backup um, to go in after the fact. Um, but having uh, the truck here, the equipment, resources, manpower to be putting out the fire, um, and then basically uh, we had a small hole drilled through the back of the unit where I could take a torch and actually light the tree back there. Okay, and you told media that uh, one in every, tell me some stats about Christmas fires. So around this time of year, uh, one in every four holiday fires as we put them um, is attributed to decorations for the holidays. Now that can be your tree, that can be your wreath, that can be a lot of different things throughout the home. Um, but one in four is attributed to that. Number one, statistically, cause of tree fires is electrical due to the Christmas tree lights. Um, let's face it, they're fairly cheap to buy, they're fairly cheaply made, and um, we see problems with those occasionally. They've gotten better in the last two decades, but we are still seeing, seeing issues with them. After that, our next uh, biggest cause is gonna be candles. Everybody has candles out this time of year, and you know, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, as happy to see a beautiful Christmas setup and decoration um, as the next person. But, you know, switching to flameless candles that are battery operated things are always a, a better option and, and generally more safer. Okay, tell us about the Christmas tree in general. What do you suggest people do to keep it safe from catching on fire? If it's a live tree, always make sure you're watering it every single day. Keep that, that, that dish topped up with water every day. Um, using Christmas lights that are that are of good quality. Um, let's face it, when it comes to electrical things, you get what you pay for. If they're cheap, they're made cheap, okay? Um, so making sure that, always visually inspect and test your lights. I mean, everybody does it every year before they put them on anyways. But if you see any kinks, nicks out of the, out of the wires, or you've got that one special set that only half of it works unless you jiggle it, just get rid of it. <laughs> Replace that with the new stuff and make sure those are those are uh, in good working order. Tell me about, you said one in 50 Christmas tree fires yes. result in death. So yeah, that. statistically one in 50, one out of every 50 Christmas tree fires in a home results in a death. Um, the most common days that we do see uh, holiday fires, especially involving Christmas trees are on Christmas day, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Uh, those three days throughout the holiday season, you know, right on your holidays are the worst days for fires in general. Okay, so walk us through again. It, how long did it take to catch on fire and maybe how hot the fire got? So um, from the time of ignition to when we extinguished, it was about 13 minutes. We had uh, smoke alarm activation in four minutes. Uh, the tree fell over at about five. Um, and we really started to see it spread quickly at about seven, seven and a half. Um, involving the couch. So as we sat here and watched it, as, as it may have seemed like it went slowly, it's pretty realistic when it comes to the real time. If you think, you know, fire starting small, 
then growing in size um, slowly. Once it gets enough heat going and the heat release rate, to start really making it move and transfer to the packages under the tree, the couch next to it, and spread throughout the tree. Um, it's a pretty realistic time frame. If you think smoke alarm going off at four minutes, that's when your family discovers the fire. Everybody's out of the house in five minutes, hopefully. That's when the tree fell over, about the same time 911 is being called. Um, then after 911 is called, it takes a couple minutes to get us on the road, a couple minutes for us to get there, a couple more minutes for us to get all the hose lines stretched out into the house, water going on the fire. So if you think from four minutes to 13, seven minute elapsed time from, from discovery with the smoke alarm going off to extinguishment, that's a pretty realistic time frame. Um, talk about the heat. There was a um... Yep. So um, Christmas trees, especially dry Christmas trees, will produce a lot of heat. Um, the, the needles and the, uh, the pine pitch that's in the evergreens itself, well, it doesn't matter which type of Christmas tree it is, um, inherently give off uh, a higher amount of heat release uh, when they're burning. So that will uh, facilitate it transferring from other objects, and especially to furniture like the couch. Once that really started going, you saw the couch burn up quickly. Um, once that hits the ceiling and starts to go across the ceiling, you get a lot, of, a lot more rollover, as we call it, where you see the fire actually rolling and then coming out through the opening there. Temperatures at that level within that fire right there are easily 2,000, 2,500 degrees at that point. All right. All right. Um, one last question. I know this wasn't like a heating source relate. Well, you let it on fire. I let it on um, fire, yeah. What about having your Christmas tree too close to heating sources? Yeah, don't. Tell me a little bit about that. What would you say? Make, make sure you're keeping your trees away from heating sources. Um, you know, don't run your extension cords, you know, behind, around your tree or anything like that. Uh, make sure that keep the candles as far away from the tree as possible. Um, that's the other, uh, anything open flame related. Space heaters, I don't want to see those anywhere near a tree uh, typically. And just be having that, that conscious general fire safety knowledge and awareness will help out greatly in this holiday season.